One interesting thing about uh, Ralph's arc in this film is that he kind of is the antagonist, or at the very least his insecurities wind up being the antagonist. And especially in contrast to the first movie where he's so working to fight against that, I'm just curious how you kind of felt about the character progression in that way. Uh, yeah, I think it's a really cool thing. I mean, I, I really could feel for Ralph in this story because if you remember from the first one, Vanellope is his first friend. Yeah. He has not had a friend. Could imagine going through life never having a friend. So you can imagine why he's so possessive about that friendship. It's the one person who like understood him and likes him. Although he and Felix are pretty friendly by the end of the first one. But <laughs> his insecurities become right. the, the antagonist of the stories. Ralph himself ends up kind of being one of the heroic elements in the story. Right. Um, but... Yeah, I think I think that's a really cool thing about the movie, the fact that we tell the truth about friendship and we tell the truth about people like it's not just some idealized funny cartoon world mm -hmm. that the issues of friendship between Ralph and Vanellope are real issues. That's a that's a fam that's familiar territory for people. So I I was really proud that we were honest about that. If I'm not a racer, what am I? Oh, you're my best friend. There is a long development process for these movies. They like change a lot. I'm curious just how much Vanellope's arc changed from the beginning to the end. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> actually from the first table read to the end, and and that's the process. That's sure. that's all. You know, it's it's never the first that first draft that you read at the table, and it's they, that's what makes Disney movies. They're so rich. Mm -hmm. They take such care in how to tell a story and making it have level, level, levels, levels, levels on top of, you know, and so layered and. It's awesome to be a part of, and every change made it m stronger and more beautiful and and more current. I yeah. mean, it really is, for something that takes a very long process, it reflects life as it is in this very moment. Absolutely. There's been a lot of different versions of the script. I know that going to the internet was always the thing, like how we got there, why we went there, was were the, were the story things we were trying to figure out. But um, that's pretty much another kind of fish out of water story, which is true of the first one where we're going into these other games, but it's you know on steroids in this one. <laughs> we're, going, we're going out into the massive infinite world of the internet. Wow, look at all this stuff. This is the most beautiful miracle I've ever seen. So just having the experience of making the first movie, I'm curious when you got the chance to play Vanellope again, how much ownership you were able to take and like decide what directions you wanted to take her. Well, I mean the 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 writers it's 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 a real collaboration, but the writing is brilliant and it's they're always uh reworking parts and and just um they put so much care into storytelling, into every single moment. And yeah, there's times like John and I will improvise and we add little things and I, you know, like we care too, so we are all a part of it, but it, everyone is so good at what they do yeah. and, and it's just awesome. I was so excited to come back. I, I missed her, you yeah. know. <laughs> Did you actually get time in the booth with John C. Wright? Like, were you actually together? We always record together. Always together. Okay, that's fantastic. Was that the same for the first movie as well? Yeah. Okay, that's great. John insisted on it, and yeah. I'm, I'm so grateful for that because it just makes a giant difference. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, we're looking in each other's eyes. We're actually reacting to what we're saying, and, sure. and you, we can improvise, and we can be loose, and we can try to make each other laugh and try to make each other cry, you know? Hey, kid! Wake up! You. You're going on the internet. What? Just given your experience making the first movie, I'm curious if you had a feeling of kind of increased ownership over the character in this one and maybe more creative opportunities to contribute to the story. Uh, well, I contributed a lot to the story in the first on the first movie, and uh, I think it was it was a good experience for everybody. So they did invite me back again to participate in the story meetings and. I have to say, like, the older I get and the more work I do, the less satisfying it is to just job into something, just go in and, you know, stay in your lane and whatever. Uh, so I was really honored that they let me come into the story meetings on this movie because mostly I was there to be, like, an advocate for Ralph. Mm -hmm. You know, as the story was developing, they are deciding how it was going to change and what the new dynamics of the story were going to be. I was the one who knew Ralph the most because... 
a lot of these discoveries that we made about the character came from inside of me, my own consciousness and my own heart. Shouldn't it be Ralph wrecks the internet? Yeah, since he is Wreck-It Ralph. Uh, yeah, but break the internet, it's like a thing. Right, it's just wreck the internet kind of sounds better, doesn't it? Mm, you're not wrong. Again, ever over.